You touched upon the situation of Latin America, and obviously there has been a little bit of a shift uh, in tide happening with elections in Argentina and Brazil, where the right-wing governments are now uh, believing uh, in austerity as a, as a policy. Um, we wanted to, to ask you, how do you explain the change that has been happening, and uh, how does the referendum and the election in Ecuador fit into the um, uh, wider context of Latin America? Yeah, I think there's been much talk about this, particularly in the international press, about this end of cycle in Latin America and so on and so forth. I don't really abide to that. I'm certainly not going to deny there have been a number of political changes in Latin America, and some of them have affected the left and have meant the return to power of right-wing government and even of neoliberal right-wing government with a strong kind of austerity agenda. But uh, first of all, I'd like to say that we always knew that would happen. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, a self-fulfilled prophecy if you're living in democracy that at some point there's going to be a shift in power. And obviously, the exercise of government is also, you know, it means a, a, a you get the erosion of 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 popularity. It's inevitable, and uh, you know, the, a number of these left-wing governments have been in power for a long time. We're talking about 10, 13 years. You know, in the in case of Argentina, maybe 13 years. Uh, and, and it was inevitable that one day there was going to be uh, a victory on behalf of the right-wing um, uh, opposition. It's something that the uh, left, even the revolutionary left in Latin America, decided to espouse. Democracy, democracy and always more democracy. Now, what I would like to say is that we shouldn't think that this, uh, this these a number of defeats that we've had in the regions mean, as I've said, an end of cycle or a return to the, the, the neoliberal heyday of the 1990s. Some journalists and analysts, particularly outside of our region, have portrayed it as, a, as the failure of the model and as a return to neoliberalism. I come from a left in the 90s that, when it did well in the polls, had 3%. 4% was like a, the maximum. And there were always six or seven candidates ahead of us that were all neoliberal, all conservative, all right-wing, basically differentiating themselves because they did, represented different oligarchic sectors or different product, productive sectors within our economy. You know, one, ones were more associated to, associated to bananas, others to shrimp, or others to other uh, commodities. Um, and then we always came very far down the list. Even in the cases where the left loses in Latin America, and it's not, and I've just argued it's not going to happen in Ecuador, but even when it loses, it's the second biggest force. It sometimes has a parliamentary majority. It's probably, even all now, uh, after a few months of right-wing government, first in the polls for a comeback, there are a proven politicians, young cadres, young uh, ex-ministers that are in their 30s or in their 40s that are that, that, that are strong politically. There are proven public policies that have reduced poverty, that have reduced inequality, and there is a proven decade of growth with redistribution, which is always the fear with the left. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, the left they have great intentions, they're probably nice people, but can they really run the economy? And certainly, uh, the success of the left in power in Latin America for a decade was that it was we never had so much growth in Latin America as we had during that decade. And we never had as much redistribution and as much reduction of inequalities that we've had. So I'm pretty optimistic that the left is there to stay. And there's, there's, there's a struggle there, but it's certainly not going back to the 80s of 90s. There was no struggle where there was an absolute ideological supremacy of the agenda of deregulation and neoliberalism. So that's what I would say. I think it's important that Ecuador wins on the, that uh, the progressive forces in Ecuador win on Sunday because I think it would send a very strong signal in the region that uh, you know the, 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 the few electoral defeats over the last few months and years have come to an end, that sending a strong signal that progressive forces are still very much alive and well and that this is going to be the progressive century for Latin America.